Now, listen, we've had other big news come in a little while ago that a massive prisoner swap with Russia has taken place. Real Cold War kind of stuff here almost. Um, and among those swapped and uh, receiving their freedom is the wrongfully detained Wall Street Journal journalist Evan Gerskovich now free. Is this a rare win for Joe Biden's foreign policy here? Oh, you know, I think it's a win for the country. I was involved in these things when I was in the White House. They are very, very difficult to pull off, James. And the White House is right to celebrate this. I think uh, as we tape this tonight, the uh, the, the uh, hostages will be home um, later this evening, and the president will fly out to, uh, to the Air Force Base to meet them. This is a good thing for the country. Now, that being said, I have been critical in the past of the deals that the Biden administration cut to get Americans home from Russia and thought that we paid too high a price. It may be. It may be that we've paid that very, very high price in this particular circumstance. We don't know the terms of mm. the deal yet, but I think it's fair to say, look, but until we know the terms of the deal, let's all be happy for the fact that these Americans who were wrongfully detained are home. That's a good thing. Let's agree for the next couple of days, at least it's a good thing. And we can worry about the details as they come out. Yeah, look, Mick, I think we can all celebrate that. But uh, there's another sort of Justice Department deal that I'm a little more concerned about. It's sort of been revealed that the Department of Justice has cut its own deal with the al-Qaeda terrorists allegedly responsible for plotting the September 11th attacks, and they've now been spared the death penalty. Here's what uh, vice presidential Republican candidate J.D. Vance had to say about this. Today, I heard that the Biden-Harris Department of Justice cut a deal with al-Qaeda terrorist Khalid Sheikh Mohammed to avoid the death penalty. Uh, someone who enlisted in the Marines to serve after 9-11, that is ridiculous, but it's not surprising. Now just think about the point that we've gotten to. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have weaponized the Department of Justice to go after their political opponents, but they're cutting a sweetheart deal with 9-11 terrorists. We need a president who kills terrorists, not negotiates with them. Aside from being very cynical about the timing of this, that this dropped just before the Russia prisoner swap was announced, um, how, would the, how is this possible that the Department of Justice is even contemplating this sort of thing for these horrendous mass murderers? Oh, it's even worse than that, James. Uh, the, as of tonight, the Biden White House is saying that they were not involved in those negotiations. Think about that for a second. The president of the United States is saying that his Department of Justice, and keep in mind, there's this impression around the world that the Department of Justice is independent from the White House. It is not. The U.S. Attorney General is an, an appointed member of the president's cabinet. And mm. what that attorney general is saying is that he cut a deal without talking to the boss. That's just not defensible. It, that, that, that doesn't make any sense at all. You can't, by the way, the, the, to, to say, look, we didn't have anything to do with the bad deal here with Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, but let's take all the credit that we want to for getting the, the folks out of yeah. Russia. That, not, that's not sitting very well with folks. This is a problem for them. I, not, I have no idea if the timing, listen, that don't ever, uh, in Washington, D.C., there's a general rule, James, don't ever assume a conspiracy where incompetence will explain I mean, it's things. it's just indefensible. I don't even know why these people are still alive. But anyway, let's move on to, the, to finally, the uh, potential vice presidential pick uh, nominee, running mate for Kamala Harris. Apparently, they're going to make a big announcement on Tuesday in Philadelphia. Now, this has put some speculation on the idea that John Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania is going to be the pick, but others have pointed out that VPs have been or running mates have been picked in other states from the states that they're from. Where do you think this is going to go? Is Shapiro going to be it, or is there a problem with him and the the Gaza wing of the Democrats if if he is in fact the one who gets the nod? You know, just as I was sitting here before we started chatting, there was a, a story that broke here in Washington about how. Um, some progressives are pushing back against the governor of, of, of Pennsylvania and calling him genocide. Uh, I think I think his first name is what's it, James or Joe. I can't remember. Um, the, the, attacking him for being uh, too pro-Israel. That's a problem within the Democrat Party. I still come back to the point, however, that he's a popular governor of a tremendously important swing state. And if the Democrats really believe that Josh Shapiro can deliver the state of Pennsylvania, they will take him. That's simply too high of a prize for them to leave on the table. Um, look, they, you do focus on the fact that the rollout campaign starts in Philadelphia, that's in Pennsylvania. You would think that maybe that gives a hint that they're gonna pick mm. Josh Shapiro. Um, but it's not always the case, as you point out. I think when Mitt Romney introduced Paul Ryan, he introduced him in Ohio. Of course, uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't do very well in that race um, <laughs> as Republicans. 
I'm not sure that's the model the Democrats want to follow. Um, but Democrats certainly have an issue with um, Governor Shapiro being Jewish. Um, there's going to be folks inside their party that don't like that. And whether or not that factors into the uh, into the final decision, well, I guess we'll know on Tuesday. Mick, did you ever think that in 2024 we'd be talking about the Democrats and them not picking a potential number two on the ticket because they were Jewish? I mean, that just seems like a real indictment of where we are at the moment. Yeah, if you'd asked me before October 7th, I'd say it's not possible, uh, you know, that anti-Semitism is something from previous generations and that it's not real. And, you know, I've always had my Jewish friends tell me, no, it's real. And I'm like, well, you know, is it or is it just yeah. something you perceive? It's absolutely real. It's absolutely real in my country right now. It's real around the world. We can see examples of it all over the place. And it is alive and well within a small but very vocal and very important part of the Democrat Party in my country. And that is a, that's and, a, that's something for the country to be ashamed of. And we're seeing it, too, here in Australia with Labor and the Greens. Mick Mulvaney, thank you so much for your time this week. See you next time.